7.5 Parametric Equations Graph Parametric Equations So far in this text you have represented the graph of a curve in the xy plane using a single equation involving two variables x and y. In this lesson you represent some of these same graphs using two equations by introducing a third variable. Consider the graphs below, each of which models different aspects of what happens when a certain object is thrown into the air. Figure 7.5.1 shows the vertical distance the object travels as a function of time, while figure 752 shows the objective's horizontal distance as a function of time. Figure 753 shows the object's vertical distance as a function of its horizontal distance. So this one, over time, shows its vertical distance, in other words, how high it gets, how high the object is going at a certain amount of time. In this one, this just shows the horizontal distance it travels over a certain amount of time and then this one uh, depicts vertical distance versus the horizontal distance. So they're all telling a similar story but yet a different story. Each of these graphs and their equations tells part of what is happening in the situation but not the whole story. To express the position of the object both horizontally and vertically as a function of time we can use parametric equations. The equations below both represent the graph shown in figure 753. In rectangular equations, or in other words, uh, x is the independent, y is the dependent variable, uh, you would get this graph. In a parametric equation, this right here, this represents the horizontal distance, and this equation right here represents the vertical distance. And in order to graph it horizontal versus vertical, you have to have a third variable. From the parametric equations, we can now determine where the object was at a given time by evaluating the horizontal and vertical components for t. For example, when t is 0, the object was at 0, 040. The variable t is called the parameter. The graph shown is plotted over the time interval 0 to 4. Plotting points in the order of increasing values of t traces the curve in a specific direction. So now, unlike some of the equations that we've seen, uh, parametric has direction, called the orientation of the curve. This orientation is indicated by arrows on the graph as shown. The object direction is in this path right here from left to right. If f and g are continuous functions of t in the interval i, then the set of ordered pairs f of t, g of t represent a parametric curve. The equations x equal f of t and y equal, f, y equal g of t are parametric equations for this curve. t is the parameter and i is the parameter interval. Sketch the curve created by x equals t squared minus 1 and y equals t over 4 plus 2. Let's plug negative 3 in for t. We have 9 minus 1 is 8, so x is 8. Negative 3 fourths plus 2, that's like negative 0.75 plus 2, which is 1.25. Uh, negative 2 in for t is 4 minus 1, that's 3, and then we have negative 1 half plus 2 which is 1.5, or 1 and a half. Negative 1 gives us 1 minus 1, that's 0, and then we have negative 1 fourth plus 2, so that's like negative 0.25 plus 2, which is 1.75. Then we have 0, which gives us negative 1, 0 over here gives us 2. We have the point 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1.25. It's about right there. 3 gives us 1 and a half. 1, 2, 3 gives us 1 and a half. That's right there. 0, 1.75, which is right there. And then negative 1 gives us 2. Then we go to the positive side. When we plug 1 in, we get uh, 0 for the x. 1 fourth plus 2 is 2.25. Uh, 2 gives us, let's see, 4 minus 1, that's 3. We get, uh, plug 2 in, we get 1 half, 1 fourth, no, it's, uh, when we plug 2 in for y, we get 1 half plus 2, that's 2.5, and then plug 3 in, we get 9 minus 1, that's 8, and we get 3 fourths plus 2, that's 2.75. We have the point 0, 2.25, which is about right there. Uh, 3 gives us 2.5. 1 half, 
which is right there. And then we have 8 and 2.75, 1.2.75. So what we end up with is this parabola right here. And this parabola has direction. So we indicate the direction with the arrows. Sketch the curve created by x equals t squared over 4 minus 1 and y equals t over 5 plus 2. When we plug negative 5 in for t here, we get 25 over 4 minus 4 over 4, which is 21 over 4, which is 5.25. So we have 5.25. Plug negative 5 in for y, and we get negative 1 plus 2. That's 1. Negative 4 in for x is 16 over 4 minus 4 over 4. That's 12 over 4, which is 3. We get 3 here, and then for the y, we get negative 4 fifths plus 2, which is negative uh, 0.8 plus 2, which gives us 1.2. And hopefully you get the idea. I've filled in the other decimal points for these other t values. Let's plug in some positive values for t. When we plug 1 in, we get 1 fourth minus 1. That's 0.25 minus 1. That's going to be negative 0.75. When we plug 1 in for the y, we have 1 fifth plus 2, which is 0.2 plus 2. We get 2.2. Plugging 2 in, we get 4 over 4. That's 1 minus 1. That's going to be 0. And then 2 in for uh, the y is 2 fifths plus 2. That's 0.4 plus 2, we get 2.4. Let's plot the points. We have 5.25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.25, 1. We have 3, 1.2, let's call that 1.2. 1 1.25 1 is 1.4. Uh, 0 is 1.6, so maybe a little higher. Uh, negative 0.75 is 1.8. Negative 1 is 2. Then we have negative 0.75 again. That's 2.2. Uh, we have 0, 2.4. We have 1.25 is 2.6. 3 is 2.8, maybe right there. And 5.25, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.25 is 1, 2, 3. So we have, I know it doesn't quite look like it. But uh, this is another parabola, and it has direction. So we give the direction right there, and I should stop right at that last point. Whoops, too big. Let's go to the little one. There we go, we'll stop right there. Sketch the curve given by x equals 2t minus 6 and y equals t squared minus 3 over negative 3 to 3. Let's pick a value for t within negative 3 to 3. How about 0? 0 is usually the easiest to plug in. When we pick 0, we have negative 6, negative 3. Well, this has the point. Does it have negative 6, negative 3? Nope, not at all, so it can't be a. Here we have the point negative 6, 3. It can't be that one. Uh, here we have negative 6, and they're going by 3, so it looks like uh, negative 6 is not negative 3 here. So on this one, we do have negative 6, negative 3. So it's got to be letter D. Write y equals 2t and x equals t squared plus 2 in rectangular form. On this one, I'm going to get t by itself on this one, and I'm not going to get t by itself on this one because we have t squared. So let's write t equals y over 2. And then we'll plug y over 2 in for this t over here. We have x equals y squared over 4 plus 2. Now we need to get y by itself. Because in rectangular form, we want something like, oh, y equals 2x plus 1. Or we want this to say y equals. Let's minus 2. We have x minus 2 equals y squared over 4. Let's multiply by 4. y squared equals 4 times x minus 2. And we will square root y equals the square root of 4 times x minus 2, which we could write as 2 square root of x minus 2. Now you might be thinking, well, why didn't we write plus or minus? Let's take a look at this right here. 
no matter what we plug in for t, x is always going to be positive. So we get to assume on this one that x is always positive in this one. If x is always positive on this one, then if x is always positive here, then y is always going to be positive on this one. So if y has no chance of being negative here, then y can't have any chance of being negative on this one. Let's take a look at this on a calculator. If you go to mode, you can put your calculator in parametric mode. Then we have y equals, it has a spot for the x and it has a spot for the y. So in this case, x is t squared plus 2 and y is 2t. And we can graph this. And notice how y is not negative in this right here. There's no chance of being negative. So on this one, uh, this would be the exact same graph and there's no chance of y being negative here if we don't have the plus or minus. Write y equals 1 over 2t and x equals square root of t plus 1 in rectangular form. Then graph the equation. State any restrictions on the domain. Let's get t by itself in this one. We have x squared is equal to t plus 1 and then t is equal to x squared minus 1. Now we'll plug this in for t in the other equation. We have y equals 1 over 2 times x squared minus 1. Let's look at the restrictions on x for the parametric equation. Since x is equal to a radical, x is going to be greater than or equal to 0. And if we look at the rectangular version, we have x cannot equal plus or minus 1. But negative 1 isn't even in this, so we have to restrict uh, x to being not equal to 1. Let's graph this, and we are looking at only uh, positive x values. Now since uh, x cannot be 1 in this equation, then at 1 we actually have a vertical asymptote because that's what makes the denominator 0. If we plug 0 in for x, uh, we get negative 1 half, so we have the point 0, negative 1 half right there. And if we plugged in some other points, we'd find out that the graph goes down like this. Uh, we could plug in 1 half, I suppose. And if we plug in 1 half, we get 1 over 2 times 1 fourth minus 1, which is 1 over 2 times negative 3 fourths, which is 1 over uh, negative 3 halves, so it's negative 2 thirds. So we have 1 half negative 2 thirds. Then if we plug in a value of 2, we get 1 over 2 times 3, so we get 1 sixth. So the graph must be doing something like that. Write y equals 1 over t and x equals 1 over square root of t minus 5 in rectangular form. Then graph the equation. State any restrictions on the domain. Let's get t by itself in this equation right here. We have uh, x plus 5 is equal to 1 over the square root of t. We can switch places with these. We can multiply by the square root of t, divide by x plus 5. We get the square root of t equals 1 over x plus 5. Then square both sides. t equals 1 over x plus 5 squared. Then when I plug 1 over x plus 5 squared in for t, this is the reciprocal function. We end up with one, uh, y equals x plus 5 squared. So we can rule out A and we can rule out D. Now we have to figure out whether this is B or C. Since there's no chance of this piece right here being negative, this whole value right here is going to start at negative 5. As a matter of fact, this can't even be 0. So X is going to be greater than negative 5. And so this must be letter B.